The Iguazu Falls are the most extensive system of waterfalls in the world, with 275 different vertical drops stretching for nearly three kilometers along the border of Argentina and Brazil. It's no secret that this is one of the most breathtaking natural wonders on Earth. This is so epic! But it's also very accessible for tourists of all ages, attracting millions of visitors a year, which made me wonder, is it really worth the hype? So me and my trusty travel companions, Dylan and Alyssa, have decided to take a little trip and find out for ourselves what it's really like to visit Iguazu Falls in both Argentina and Brazil. See that time? perfect time to go to Falls de Iguazu. Oh god. Good morning. 4.55, the Uber's already here. Oh yeah. Let's get it. Okay, the Uber's actually here. Well, we need to go. It's too early for Sorry, us. I need to stop. This is that yeah, this is it. <laughs> Not me almost going in the wrong car. Hola, como estas? Buenas. Si. There's already so many people here, and it's not even six in the morning. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> How are you? Hi. We're going! Oh my god, you're right! Sunrise! Haven't seen it yet, but I'm seeing it in the airport for the first time. All right, here we go! Oh my god, you all excited! officially in the town of Iguazu. We took the bus, which initially I didn't think was gonna be worth it because it was three mil a person, but it literally dropped us off at the bus terminal, which is right across the street from our hotel, which is Hotel St. George. I'm pretty excited about it, but I'm more excited for the food because we are so freaking hungry. so hungry right now. So I'm hoping it's like 9.35. I'm hoping that we can snag some of that free breakfast. So stay tuned. We actually got here right when it opened, which is the move. Because not only is it There's way no less hot, right because it's, it is summer. We are smack in the middle of Argentinian summer right now. We're here in early February. I know that this place is going to be a madhouse soon. It is a Thursday, so we tried to get here on a weekday, but this is a super, super popular place. One of the most popular places in Argentina for tourists. So yeah, we wanted to get here as soon as possible. And it's really not bad yet with the crowds. So we're making our way to our first trail. But first things first, we need a little sunscreen bug spray action. <laughs> a lot of Extremely sunscreen important. <laughs> We've been planning to come here together, me and Alyssa and Dylan, for like <laughs> months. Months. <laughs> and we're here. Should I put sunscreen first and then yes. bug spray? I do sunscreen and then bug spray. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. I already shook it. Sorry. Yesterday the UV was what, like? Nine. Nine. <laughs> Nine, yeah. We had the most insane day yesterday. We arrived here with like two to four hours of sleep. Then we had a jam-packed day exploring like the town of Iguazu. We went to a couple local communities. So the indigenous community here are the Guarani people. They have several different villages around. So we went to one that was super cool. We were the only people there. Felt very authentic. They gave us a tour. Shout out Jose. Whoa. <laughs> Jose was the man, took us around. Like seasoning a pan right now, you know? <laughs> Also yesterday, we did a catamaran ride along the Iguazu River. It was pretty cool, but the coolest part is that you go to this point called the Tres Cruceros, where basically the river at the specific point borders Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina all at the same time. We are officially in three countries. At the same time. At the same time. Which I've never done before. We're floating. Technically, we're floating. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. That's my pack mule right there. I said, I'm just here for the vibes. Dylan did no planning, so he's carrying everything. Excuse me. <laughs> After weeks in a city, being out here in the jungle is absolutely curing my soul right now. I'm on the hunt for the monos because they live here. And yesterday, the locals said they're usually out in the mornings and at night. It is 8.35-ish. 
hoping we spot some. Okay, so we're taking the walk to the upper falls. There's two like main routes, but if you want, you can take the jungle train if you don't wanna walk. It's a really short walk, but it's kind of fun to take a little train up to the top. Oh my God! <laughs> Look how epic that is! It's so cool! Oh my god. I just kept forgetting that this is where we were going. We were walking to see this. Oh my god, and we're barely even seeing all of them. On this side, on the Argentinian side, there's 80% of the waterfalls. There's 275 total, making it the largest system of waterfalls in the world. Absolutely unfreaking real. I can't believe we're gonna go under these waterfalls later. We're gonna get we're gonna get actually soaking, soaking right? Oh my god, you can feel the mist! We oh, just feel so good right now! Oh my god, I'm ready! Oh my god, look at the rainbow! Look at the rainbow! This is so epic! Honest thoughts, everyone, and reflections. Obviously, we've just done the upper route. For me personally, major pro. Obviously, the waterfalls itself are not overhyped at all. They're so Honestly epic. They're underhyped. They I are underhyped. Like, truly, the water right now is gushing, like, so strong. Sprays everywhere. The mist is so epic. Maybe some of the cons? Mm. Hmm. <laughs> That's a tough one. Okay. Massive tourist groups. There is no spatial awareness. Zero. There is no. Excuse me. Yeah, it's just a lot. It's chaotic. There's a lot of people. And we're here really early on a weekday, so I can't imagine what it's like on like a Saturday afternoon. The other thing is it's just insanely humid. It's obviously summer right now. We are again here early, so it's not as hot as we experienced yesterday. Yesterday was insane, but the humidity is just pretty crazy. So expect a sweat. We are about to go on an epic boating <laughs> grand adventure. adventure. <laughs> we're, I think, gonna get pretty soaked, which I am very excited about. Look at him. Hi, dude. Careful though, keep a distance. Look at those claws. So those are called huati, and they are like the most common animal that you see here in Iguazu National Park. They're kind of like a cross between a raccoon and, I don't know, like an anteater or something? Yeah, they look like they have, Yeah, like they have like the little snout. Sharp teeth. They have really sharp teeth and sharp claws. But they're just chilling. They're super used to humans. Obviously don't touch them or get super close to them because they are wild animals, but you probably will see one when you come. I also forgot to mention that you may be wondering why didn't you go to the Devil's Throat? Because that's kind of the highlight of the Argentina side of Iguazu. And it's actually been closed since December of 2023. They don't have an open date yet because there was massive flooding. So that is unfortunately closed. It is a little disappointing that we don't get to do that, but you know, you can't control nature. And that just happens sometimes. Okay, so we just had a little jungle drive, which was pretty cool. Um, it was maybe about 15, 20 minutes, and now we're walking down to go on La Gran Aventura, which basically, we're about to go get dumped on <laughs> by the biggest waterfall in this national park. And we are getting to see the yeah. Garganta de Diablo. Yeah, exactly. Which, if we didn't do this, we wouldn't be able to see it. Exactly. I'm super excited. I'm very excited. There is an alligator. We, I literally oh, looking, like, I'm looking at an alligator thing? right now. <laughs> Alyssa goes, is that a gator? That's I'm like being like, um, from Florida. I would know. Hi, dude. We're going. Okay, I will say I think this is 100% worth it. We haven't even gone under the waterfalls yet, but to see them up close in the water itself, you really get such an appreciation for just how massive and how powerful these falls are, and just how many. Like, it's actually crazy how many there are. Unreal. <laughs> we were just there on that bridge, and now we're here. This is way more insane than I expected, to be honest. Oh my God. Oh my God, we're going in the waterfalls right now.
coolest things ever, truly. This boating adventure was 1000% worth it and definitely the highlight of our day. We had so much freaking fun and it was also such a nice way to cool off because it was insanely hot. We did go check out the lower circuit trail after this, but it was so hot that I had absolutely no energy to vlog. We are so hot and sweaty that we feel like we're going to pass away. I can see the sweat <laughs> on my desk right now. <laughs> But the views are absolutely unreal. It's definitely worth it to do both trails because you get totally different views of the falls and they're all absolutely stunning. It's a beautiful day to go to Brazil. <laughs> Dylan's homeland, you guys didn't know. Homeland. His second homeland. This man is half Brazilian. Shout out Claudia. And how long has it been since you've been in Brazil? Uh, 13 years. Damn! It's been a while. Well, I've never been to Brazil. And actually, the last time I was in Brazil, I was here in Paz de Iguazu. So Wait, that was... that's crazy! Well, I'm really excited. We are rushing to the bus station. The first bus of the day leaves at 8.30 and... It's 8.20. I can't believe we're about to freaking go to Brazil. My 28th country. We're going to Brazil! You look so cute! Brazil flag today. Yes. If you're like us and you try to get places as early as possible, then make sure that you get here at least like 10, 15 minutes before the bus leaves and get your ticket because there's already a line forming and the bus leaves in 10. The bus will take you across the border and to immigration and you'll have to get out, show your passport and a visa if required. We're officially crossing the border into Brazil. And from there, you'll get back on the bus and drive to the national park itself, where you will take another bus to the falls. Putting on the sunscreen. Sunscreen's going on. We're on the bus to the falls. I feel like I'm going to Universal Studios. Oh, wow. In the graph of the park, they were showing wow. how to get here, and there was a little rainbow in the graph. Oh God, There's so a rainbow weird. here. <laughs> wow. We literally walked like 10 steps, and we were looking at the waterfalls. Oh my god, it looks so beautiful from it, here. It looks so beautiful. Okay. Wow. It's a totally different view, too. Oh, I love this. Oh. We're not going to spend much time looking at that view because it's about a one and a half kilometer trek to the actual like epic viewpoint where we go on this bridge. So we're trying to get ahead of the crowds by like probably 20 seconds, but... to walk out basically over the falls. This is the moment I've been waiting for since we arrived. I'm so excited! This is so cool. We are on the platform walking on top of the rushing water right outside of this waterfall here. And literally for 360 degrees, you just get insane waterfall views. <laughs> I didn't expect to get up this close. I know. I'm freaking out. There's a million waterfalls. The water is crystal blue. I'm just gonna cry. These are my tears. We got so lucky with the conditions because a lot of times the water is brown. It is so a ago, it was beautiful. Brown. Yeah. Honestly, it's been so unbearably hot, but here you would never know how hot it is because oh you're just getting God, misted. It feels, so it feels so freaking good. We're recreating me 12 years ago, 13 years ago. I don't know. It's been a while. <laughs> But this is where I was a long time ago as a little baby. Just when I thought it couldn't get any cooler. Hello? Okay, we are back in Buenos Aires. It's been a few days since I arrived from Iguazu. Not gonna lie, needed at least 24 hours to fully recover from the heat and the walking. It was very intense, but 
absolutely worth it. So I kind of wanted to just sit down real quick and give you my honest reflections and thoughts on our trip to Iguazu and kind of what you can expect when going, maybe some advice that I have. So let's jump in first with kind of what you can expect with the heat and the crowds because I'd say those were the two main cons. I'll preface all of this by saying the waterfalls were a million percent worth the trip and the heat and everything that went along with this trip that made it a little uncomfortable. Um, the falls themselves are truly like nothing I've ever seen. It's really hard to believe that things like this exist naturally in our world and it will really give you such an insane appreciation for Mother Earth and our world in general and just the natural wonders that we need to protect. It's so freaking incredible. That being said, the crowds are pretty insane. Um, it was so much more touristy than I was expecting. It kind of felt like an amusement park. We were all kind of talking after the trip and reflecting on it and the waterfalls themselves were absolutely spectacular, but the park itself felt like an amusement park. It's extremely commercialized. There are tons and tons of gift shops and restaurants and the train and the buses just kind of felt like you're going to Universal Studios in a way. Definitely don't expect to go and feel like you're totally immersed in nature because that's not how it felt really. Um, I'd say I felt the most that way on our first trek in the Argentina side in the morning because you do get to walk through a really nice jungle atmosphere and that part is really beautiful but the Brazil side for sure it's a very small walk and you just kind of have viewpoints which again they're stunning but you don't get that feeling of discovering some new, incredible, you know, natural wonder. You will be surrounded by crowds pretty much the entire time. So I recommend going in the weekday if you can. I think the best months to go that I read online is late March through early June. The falls should be flowing a lot throughout the entire year. Um, but during that time, the crowds are a little bit less. The prices are a little bit less, except for Easter time. Don't go around Easter because that's always one of the most crowded crowded times to go anywhere like that. If you can, go on a weekday and go first thing in the morning. Get to the parks as early as possible. So I recommend going for at least two days because you should definitely try to see both the Argentina and the Brazil side because they're totally different experiences very different views of the falls. The Argentina side, you really get up close and personal with the falls, and there's a lot more hiking that you can do there. You'll see more wildlife, and it's, it feels a little bit less commercialized than the Brazil side, but the Brazil side is just this epic panoramic view of the falls themselves, and so you can really kind of grasp just how massive and incredible these falls are. Um, so I do recommend doing both sides. So try and go on two different days at least because that way you can get to the parks early in the morning both days. And you can get your tickets online in advance. When I did it, you get your tickets in certain time slots. So I would always get mine as early as possible. And even if you aren't going to the Brazil side, make sure that you are bringing your passport into the park with you because a lot of the times they will need it for verification purposes. I don't totally know why they necessarily need the passport but bring it because if you don't have it it would really suck to have to go back to your hotel and get it and especially for going over to the Brazil side like you saw in the video you will have to go through immigration so make sure you check for the visa requirements because when we went in February of 2024 there is no visa requirements to enter Brazil for US citizens but I believe that is going to change on April 10th so make sure you're checking for the up-to-date visa requirements so you don't get stuck in a little pickle. And another really interesting point that I wanted to bring up was we took a taxi to and from the Argentina side so we could get there as early as possible. And we were talking to our taxi driver because I was really curious from his perspective how, you know, the crowds have been, the tourists, you know, is it always this crowded? Is it less crowded? And he actually said that in 2024, it was less crowded than in 2023, which was kind of mind blowing because of how many people there were. But he said this is largely due to the crazy inflation that is happening in Argentina right now. If you've looked into current events happening in Argentina, 
the inflation is absolutely crazy right now it's really really hurting the Argentine locals here and it has raised prices quite a bit in Iguazu because in the past a lot of people would come to the Argentina side to eat food to you know have a bit of a more affordable experience because previously the prices in Brazil were much much higher than they were in Argentina but now those prices are starting to get closer and closer together so a lot of locals or people that would have come to Iguazu in the past can't afford it right now so that's just something to be aware of but I would say if I had to choose between the Argentina side and the Brazil side if you know I could only come for one day I would choose the Argentina side because there's just a lot more to do there are two main treks the upper and lower treks and then you also have several different little routes and trails that you can check out as well if you want you get really up close and personal with the falls and we didn't even get to go to the devil's throat which is the most iconic waterfall in the park and usually when it's open you'll get sprayed from this giant massive waterfall and it's a really really cool up close experience with that fall but even without it it was so amazing and there's a lot more wildlife on the Argentina side as well just because there's a lot more hiking that you get to do there it's a little less commercialized than the Brazil side so I really enjoyed the Argentina side in addition of course to our boat trip that we got to do that was absolutely the highlight could not recommend it enough but you can also do that boat trip from the Brazil side as well I think it's a little bit more expensive but that is an option if you are on the Brazil side you technically can go to the Argentina and Brazil side in one day but I don't recommend it at all because not only will you be super super rushed you never know how the bus schedules are gonna work and if you have a flight or anything that you have to catch you don't want to be scrambling at the last minute because sometimes well a lot of the times buses do not arrive and depart right on schedule so you kind of are waiting around a lot of the time so I would recommend splitting it into two days regarding the heat again we were there in February of 2024 which is smack in the middle of summertime and on top of that we have had a crazy heat wave happening here in Buenos Aires and clearly Iguazu as well it was even hotter in Iguazu it was about 100 degrees degrees Fahrenheit and boy did it feel hotter than that because the humidity was absolutely unreal so make sure you are packing tons of water I always bring a big bag of liquid IV with me on all my travels because they have saved me so many times they hydrate you so so quickly I'll put my code here for 20% off and free shipping truly I have been using these for years and I absolutely love them so I brought like 10 of them to Iguazu it was a little overboard but Better safe than sorry. But yeah, make sure you're hydrating, wear tons of sunscreen, make sure you wear a lot of bug spray because there are a ton of mosquitoes. But that's pretty much it for my reflections and thoughts on Iguazu National Park. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. It's honestly been so fun for me to edit and just like relive the adventure because despite the crowds, the heat, the bugs and all of that, it was so much fun. So get a group of friends, go in with a good attitude and get ready to just absolutely have your mind blown by these epic freaking waterfalls. As always, make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button because I will be in Argentina for three months. So I have tons of adventures coming your way in Buenos Aires, Patagonia, Bariloche, Mendoza. So it's going to be an awesome couple of months here in Argentina and I'm super excited to share the journey with you. If you have any recommendations, feel free to drop them in the comments and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye! It's that sweat look, that post headband. <laughs> you got something to say? This is really what Crosby's like behind the camera. The headband was making my head hurt, but I, I don't have an excuse actually. Oh no, oh, it's the Watch out. Totally taken over for Crosby here, but I'm just fascinated at these ants. Look at how cool they are. They're hard workers and they're fuzzy. They're really cool. Really fuzzy. You're welcome, Crosby. <laughs> what did you say? It's like <laughs> seasoning a pan. <laughs> please work. Wait. Lighten up, please. Why are you so dark? <laughs>